Hi everyone, Dr. Nimichek here. I want to talk about the low blood pressure problems in kids and how I use Midadrin to try to at least lessen the impact on the child. Okay, so there's a part of the brain called the autonomic nervous system. And the autonomic nervous system uh, basically regulates your organ function, immune system, hormone, metabolism, your emotions, and it will modulate everything depending on how much stress you're under. Because if you think about it, obviously your body functions very differently whether you're asleep or you're being chased by a tiger. And the autonomic nervous system uh, is responsible for the differences in you physiologically between those different stressors. The autonomic nervous system is very sensitive, it seems, to uh, injuries. And so if we're just talking about just a simple concussion type of injury, uh, in adults and in children, the probably the single most common complaint people have are symptoms that are due to a drop of blood pressure in their brain or their scalp and neck muscles. So basically from here up, they get a little blood pressure. They have trouble pushing blood up, upwards against gravity when you're upright. Um, these injuries, you know, when you mention injuries, people often think of like, well, he didn't get knocked unconscious. You know, that's kind of there. They, they think, well, we know injuries can occur all the way down. We call them subconcussive injuries. So something less than a concussion can occur with something as the impact of a soccer ball hitting you in the head. We know inflammation can do it. And COVID is a big one. All right. COVID is a big one and uh, causing inflammatory injury. Uh, emotional trauma. And what is that in the eyes of a child with autism? It's hard to know what frightens them. All right. It could seem fairly innocuous to us and at times it's very frightening to children. And then there is some evidence accumulating that potentially uh, the release of propionic acid by the bacteria in kids with autism, that propionic acid itself may be causing a chemical injury to the nervous system. Because I'll tell you, say a kid is four or five, so they've had autism two, three years, something like that. Their low blood pressure problems are far worse than an adult who's been dealing with problems for 20 years. So there's some unique things going on that after autism, the symptoms of autism start to occur. Prior to that, so a child might be fairly normal Symptom-wise, up until 18 months, 24 months, whatever, boom, they start acting autistic, okay? So something unique is going on there, and I won't be surprised if the propionic acid is one of the culprits. So if this whole range of things, of which most people are not kind of tabulating as an injury, but they really are, an injury to the extent that you can, in animals, you can see the damage in a microscope, okay? even with emotions. So these are all very real things. Now, if our physiology is normal, we don't have any inflammation, these injuries wouldn't amount to much. You would have some symptoms for a few weeks or a couple months, and then you would recover, and it wouldn't leave any lingering low blood pressure. But the problem we have is the persistent inflammation in the body and in the brain. So inflammation in the brain, we call neuroinflammation, that the neuroinflammation is preventing the nervous system from recovering and repairing and every injury leaves a little bit of damage and a little more damage and it starts stacking up bup, 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 bup. okay and now you got low blood pressure in the head bad low blood pressure in the head now what does this result in well um, the brain doesn't work right because when you have low pressure in the brain it's hard for oxygen, which is carried in your red blood cells. So you breathe, you fill up your oxygen, your red blood cells. You got to push at the right pressure to get the oxygen to go into the brain. Okay. If the pressure is not right, the brain doesn't get enough oxygen and it won't work right. And this is in just say an isolated case, normal kid, they're 16 and they just have ADD. They have low blood pressure in the brain. That's what's causing their symptoms. All right. If you're middle aged, we may call it brain fog. If you're 70, they might, you know, they'll use a term called minor cognitive impairment or pre-Alzheimer's, 
okay? They're all low blood pressure in the brain, alrighty? So the brain just doesn't work right. And your brain is actually programmed in a way, primitive way, to try to keep a primitive human alive. So your autonomic nervous system is telling you to eat and drink and sleep. It's looking for danger. It's doing this all in the background. And it senses that it doesn't have uh, enough, ox enough oxygen. And it's a very dangerous scenario. So your, your central nervous system starts trying to influence you to get you to do things that will generate blood pressure. Okay, and you'll see this in children, and you see it in a big way with children. So, one of the key things you'll see is the brain figures out that if it can get the muscles to move in the legs, start moving leg muscles, fidgety, if you want to call it as a minor word, or intense hyperactivity, uh, is, is really what we're talking about here in the majority of the kids. Moving muscles gener increases pressure to your head and more oxygen gets in the brain. So the brain tells the children to move, okay? And it can be intense. We had a kid recently where he wouldn't sleep for a couple days in a row. He couldn't stop moving, and he ended up getting what's called rhabdomyolysis, which is a, a breakdown of muscle tissue so much. It's something you might see in uh, an Ironman competition or if uh, you know somebody running a 100-mile race. And this happened in a child, okay? It's dangerous. That's pretty rare, but it can be to that degree. And, and this is a impulse that the brain has to the child to, to make them move to get blood pressure to the head. Um, it will make kids hungry. So they crave salt and carbohydrates in particular. It'll make them crave uh, liquid, so they can be just super thirsty, constantly, constantly, constantly thirsty, you know, because all of that will boost blood pressure to your head. It'll make children want to lay flat. They'll lay on the, they slump in the chair. They want to lay flat all the time. Their head may be even dangling down off the sofa. I have kids that'll do headstands on the back of the sofa to watch TV. They watch TV upside down just to get rid of the gravity so they get pressure and oxygen to their head. Um, it'll make them do that a lot. There are some children that won't walk at all. They just army crawl on the carpet because standing upright they get poor pressure, poor oxygen. The brain won't let them do it, and they lay down. So if your kid's fidgety and eating and drinking and still not enough, the body releases norepinephrine. This is a stress hormone that'll boost blood pressure to your head, all right? And this hormone is known as fight-or-flight hormone. It can make the kids very anxious, kind of, it can, uh, you know, magnify OCD. It can make them really aggressive. It can make them damn right violent okay and I mean this is a chemical that is released to, when somebody's drowning it's in, it can be massive and intense these kids have no control over this all right so it's a pretty bad thing and it's virtually every single kid that I've seen and uh, to one degree or another and it's not being addressed as autonomic dysfunction in the autism world. It's being addressed as like, oh, we can just train them out of it and motivate them with M&Ms or something, you know, uh, to get them to sit in his chair longer. You can't do that. It's not going to work. The kid's brain thinks they're drowning. It's going to force them to move, okay? Now, what can we do about this? Well, the whole basis of the protocol that is to get the nervous system to reduce inflammation and to get the ner nervous system to recover and repair it. And it can, it can completely repair this. Sorry, I just pushed my mic over. It can completely repair this, okay? But until that happens, and I only do this in the extreme cases, we can use a medication that'll boost blood pressure to your head. Now, uh, in some cases, they will try these drugs for attention deficit disorder, like Adderall or Ritalin or Concerta. These drugs are stimulants outside the brain and inside the brain. The stimulating effect outside the brain increases blood pressure to your head. All right? The stimulating effect inside the brain is like an intense cup of caffeine, coffee, and most of the kids can't handle it. 
They may calm down some, but no, just they just can't stand the stimulation because they're already anxious enough. So I will at times, and in extreme cases, really, I don't do this unless the child is really suffering. We use a drug called Midodrin. M-I-D-O-D-R-I-N-E. Midodrin is a stimulant, but only outside the brain. It will stimulate the vascular system to boost blood pressure to your head. Midodrin is too large of a molecule and does not get in the brain. So you don't get this uh, overstimulation psychologically. You know, it won't, it won't worsen anxiety and so forth. It's generally well tolerated. Sometimes it can make your bladder a little irritable. You feel like you got to pee a lot. Uh, and then sometimes it can make your skin feel funny because it can trigger like goosebumps. It's kind of a strange little thing. But um, the drug uh, is short-lived. You have to take it two or three times a day. Um, you take it first thing in the morning. Then again, early afternoon. That's usually good enough for most kids. It'll boost pressure and the kids will calm down to a degree. It doesn't make it go away. You might reduce it by 30%, 50%, but that can be huge for the child in terms of their kind of suffering. Remember, when they're really agitated and stuff, this is the chemical you feel when you're drowning. I don't want to feel that way for an hour, okay? Yet alone days on end or weeks or months on end, okay? And so that's, you know, when I'm trying to use this drug. So dose is anywhere from two and a half to 10 milligrams in the morning, two and a half to 10 milligrams early afternoon, and then on occasion, and this is mainly in the older teens, 20 year olds, I might give a little half dose um, early evening around six o'clock. And that would be, you know, the parents are noticing, wow, it works a lot, but it kind of wears off at dinner. So we'll give them a little dose around dinner time, say six, and that'll calm them down and it helps them go to sleep actually, because this norepinephrine actually keeps you up. So it's a, it's a major cause of that. And it's very effective. It's very, very effective. Now, I know you're all very driven to help your kid. Do not use this drug without a physician's supervision, okay? You may have to find an autonomics expert. You may have to find a neurologist. And you may have to actually kind of encourage them to use this drug. Uh, you may even have to give them papers that outline all the autonomic problems that you have in autism. There's a lot of research on this, and everybody's acting like it doesn't exist. I think they're just unaccustomed to it. And then maybe if that's not the case, you come here and we can manage it for you. But that's what you use Benadryn for, okay? It'll boost blood pressure, it'll help the kids, and calm them down. Now. If I have kids with just fairly minor hyperactivity, I mean, it certainly can be really annoying, but the kids aren't looking like they're suffering. They aren't aggressive. They aren't lashing out. Um, you know, they're able to get some sleep. I don't use Minadrin. I just wait and we get them to recover. We just focus on the protocol. So it won't cure them of this problem. It just helps manage the symptoms until the protocol itself allows is allowing the nervous system to recover and then you can taper them off the minadrin it becomes quite obvious when they don't need it you'll you'll see that and usually maybe the kids need it four six eight months something like that uh, by the time the nervous system recovers enough that you you just won't need it anymore so i hope that helps a lot of questions on that lately and uh, otherwise everybody have a good weekend take care